going? Not going. <laughs> oh, we're going. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but there we go. I'm still like fucking right here. And we're back. We're back for another season of Dick at Night. Unbelievable. Oh, stop this. Um, and, and it's it's so nice to have you guys. Let me go and introduce like everybody because we do have new people here. Um, if you guys don't know, this dude, that's my son, Vincent. Um, and this season, I'm doing something different. I'm doing my uh, my Sunday shows with Peter. Peter, say hi. Peter from, from Big Brother Canada 1, and he'll be with Kat every Sunday. Kat will be joining us in just a bit. Um, Wednesdays, who do I have on Wednesdays? It's um, uh, who the fuck me. Is it? uh, me, uh, Heath, Heath, me and Portia. Heath and Portia. It's like a Big Brother 13 reunion happening on Wednesdays. Um, yeah. And then Thursdays, I got my woke group. With, uh, <laughs> with with Rockstar and Parker. But what I'm doing this year, what I, well, I'm having four shows a week this year, unlike any other season. I normally only have the three. But um, since my daughter and his sister um, are on this season, Danny, uh, my son Vincent is joining me, and we are going to do a Monday show uh, as well, just me and him. So it'll be a little bit different of a format, um, but it'll be cool. It'll be fun. So um, say hi, Vincent. Hey. <laughs> uh, and you know, you know everybody else, and everybody else knows everybody else, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're good, right? Do you guys do you guys realize that I have more black men on Dick at Night than they have in the Big Brother Twenty Two House? That's a damn shame, right? <laughs> it, 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 How like, sad is that? And what's really <laughs> fucked up is like. I'm sure David's a super nice guy. I, I am I guaranteed he's I guaranteed mm -hmm. he's probably a super really really nice guy. But he's got no fucking business being in an all star season. No. And he was no. out first. No. Like, no. like seriously, Keith Keith has better Keith and Parker both have better resumes than uh, than David. Hey, I want I at least want a competition. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> I think you know what it is is David's casting is the producers telling the world, all right, we fucked up and we brought some racists in last season. Absolutely. The racists in the, the racists that targeted Kevin. Yeah, he ended up winning the show. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give David another shot. So um and, and, I wanted to see Lawan come back with a power, and he could be the black. You know what? <laughs> he, he, came, so great. he came back. He came back as Brenda. <laughs> Lawan would have come busting in there in a superhero costume yeah. and said, so "I got my powers, I bitch." I told you, I got yeah. the superpowers. <laughs> what a great narrative payoff from you know. It only years took or whatever ten years, years, but I'm back <laughs> with my superpowers. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Lawan is, you know, David's a great guy. I met him last year. He's a really nice guy, but. I don't know. I, I think there could have been some better choices. It's just it's, it's one hundred percent pandering. That's all it is. They know they fucked up. Black Lives Matter is hot right now. Social justice is hot right now. Obviously, they're following the trends just like they do every just like they time. Do with everything they cast non-straight white people every you know, time. It's you know what's so funny that you say that is that Robin came to me. Years before Audrey was on Big Brother 17, right? She was, yeah, seven. they haven't had a okay. trans person since. Uh, but Robin came to me years, years before, and I'm talking like Big Brother before 13, 
before, I think probably around like 11 or 12. And she was like, I don't know, we were drinking out somewhere. I don't know if we had dinner or what. And she's like, Dick, I found this um, transgender woman that I want to cast on the show. She's like, you would not even know. And I'm like, well, what's going on? She's like, we're trying to get it past CBS. And it didn't happen. But after the whole Bruce, Caitlyn Jenner, Jenner, then it was all in vogue. And then CBS like took, they take the, the, you're right. You're exactly right when you say that. You know who took a chance with casting a transgender person on Big Brother? Big Brother UK. Because they did it like 15 years ago or something like that, a very long time ago. And that person, um, she actually won the show. Um, So in the UK. Um, so that's that's taking a chance. CBS always takes the easy the easy route. Um, yeah, Big Brother is supposed it's all, it's to reflect the world in, that it is happening in, though, which is that's what's happening in the world now. So it is it makes sense for Big Brother to reflect that. I'm it's, not sold that weird. David is the best choice to reflect no. that, but I mean, you know, at least it's, they're it's interesting. It's interesting though when I hear people say like you know, Big Brother, like, reflects, like, the world. But does it cast Supposed to. Really... Supposed to. Okay. It, it doesn't all... say, because, like, we could totally get into that conversation. No, I think in the beginning... Does not. <laughs> in the very no, beginning... I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the very beginning, I truly believe that their intentions were, um, were honorable, um, so to speak. They didn't have this... They didn't have this preconceived... We need a blonde. We need a brunette. We need three meatheads. We need one black guy. Oh, me and me and Parker talked about this. We were on the phone. Out of how many total black guys have been cast? It's like fourteen, right? You're you're talking to two of fourteen black men. That uh, okay, have been fourteen cast on, cast on the crazy. show. Fourteen out That's of insane. now twenty-two seasons. Fourteen. <laughs> okay. Now, out of the fourteen, I pointed this out. Half of them was like the two for one where Robin cast the black and the gay man as one person. So it's like she, she covers two minorities with one casting. So out of 14 black men, half of them she's cast as are gay. And I didn't even tell them, I didn't even tell them I was gay when I was on the casting. So but, like, but, but yeah. they got the two for one with me. We all know. I was, I was the paparazzi guy. From um, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for that. <laughs> but I was I was the paparazzi guy. I think about it. It was during the whole Dancing with the Stars thing. And, and oh, I dude, like, you worked for TMZ. It was like yeah. yeah, it was like a two for one deal. Well, three for one. <laughs> yeah, it was like I, I don't know. I just find it, I just find it kind of shitty because um, it, that's like saying that like half the black men like out there are gay and like if you're going to do a true reflection of our society like what people well, are talking about even it's just not the truth it's just it, because it, like it puts it puts like this this image that black men have to like are like you know less threatening you know in a sense well and that's like from that's, yeah. and, and, and that's, that's, that's Hollywood. this is something that i talk to keith about all the time right we've talked about this yeah and the, they, they all they always seem to cast like like you said if they don't cast the gay guy like if you look at myself ali howard we all three had the same background we all work in, in education we all were at college football players we all were, were in, into church like if, if yep. they and, and, and it's it's yeah, they, they, you have that, that. That's the safe black man, and then you had a safe black man or, or the gay black man. So that, that's that's just what it is. That's it's, it's the truth, right? It's so fucked yes. up. Yes, yeah, we had it's really the fucked up. I mean, how many do not fit one of those two molds? Either being being gay or being the church, yep. the church going mother <laughs> like mama's yep. boy type of. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about I know a lot of Marvin. That <laughs> but you're talking about Marvin Swaggy. Who else? Like, who else? Hey, look how long, took, look uh, how long one category did Will Mega have... fall into? The very first boot in the very oh, first well, what, Will Mega. He was the he was the angry black guy. He was the angry yeah. black guy. He you know what? You're right. The party, one hundred percent. Yeah. You know, look how long it took for them to have a black showman. Long time. How long it took for them to cast a black a black man and a black woman together? They were <laughs> not. Even in season hour. ten, like in Libra wasn't available. Season ten, Libra wasn't available. Ollie no, was- Libra just had a baby with her husband. Yeah, 
But uh, and then think about how many times uh, black people on this show got some kind of advantage. Other than, like I can only think of Dave on. There might be a couple like I can't really think of a lot of black people who have gotten advantages <laughs> they, they, they in the don't. Top, other than Dave on getting that like last call thing during uh, season seventeen. When we I can't when, think of any, on, anyone else. No, you're when right. we when we all first came in the house on Big Brother thirteen. And like after we do all the introductions and stuff, I'm sitting there and I'm like, "Oh my God, there's let's give Big Brother a people on this season." No, there's you said no, you said no, you said let's give Big Brother a round of applause for casting three black people. Everybody we all did. There. We all did. <laughs> all did because it's it's like a checklist. It's like every season, you know, it's like this little checklist, and they, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't get it. I, listen, I truly believe that CBS is afraid that if they cast any more than three black people, that you guys will form a gang or something. <laughs> but that's that's crazy that society actually thinks like that. Fuck society. Like, what the fuck did you <laughs> But, like, you have these white people at the top, like, you know, who make the rules and they already have these, like, biases within themselves. And that's reflecting in the racism and the casting. Well, it, it, it just, it's all it's all it, connected. It's just a fucking whiteboard. You're in casting, dude. Like you're yeah, this is your I, job. I've heard Robin I've heard has all Robin kinds of has a whiteboard. Um, and I'm not gonna say who. I almost did say who, but like one of her casting people years ago. I think it was around Big Brother, maybe eleven or twelve. Well, yeah, like eleven or twelve. Eleven or twelve. I was out in Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel out of the pool and I run into one of the casting people that I'm actually like, and I'm not friends with very many of those people, but this person I'm friends with. And I'm like, Hey, what the fuck? What are you doing out here? And he's like, I'm looking for a small blonde. Like they know exactly. They're not looking for the most intriguing or engaging or like, like different nope. personality. Anything to amplify stereotypes. Cutter stereotypes of people. And that's, that's why we get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why and we the, get. You know, and I even made a tweet like they invest more in the campus of Texas and A and M, Texas yeah, A and M, than they yeah. do yeah. with black people. One hundred percent. They really do. They're, They're basically they a they don't care about that college. Yeah, they spend. They have like one or two check marks. I, their Robin Cass's casting strategy for Big Brother is a bowl of marshmallows and two chocolate chips on the top. That's her casting strategy, and it's pretty disgusting. It, and she cashes in on it every season. Is it Robin, though, specifically, or is it CBS? The only reason I say it's, that is because no, casting and I, in Canada yeah. is far more diverse, yeah, at, yeah. at least if you want to talk <laughs> exclusively. In I think it's because, you know what? I think it's I because believe, Big Brother I will, Canada I, insists I totally, on it. Yeah, but you know what? And maybe that's for two. Peter, but, but Peter, that's, um, hang on one second. I totally hear what you're talking about. It's not fully her, responsibil her responsibility. However, sure. comma. She has a social responsibility, and she is at the top to where she can voice her opinion. Hey, why are we casting all these white people? Like totally. she has, she has a seat at the table to do that, instead of just like cashing in on it. There's, there comes to a certain time where you just need to have a, take a level of responsibility. That's all. Take some responsibility yeah. and some ownership. I mean, I, I, I've always it's been not of the totally, opinion yeah. that Big yeah. Brother should there's a should take the 16 most interesting people from the group if 10,000 people apply and you're slotting eight men and eight women uh then you should take the eight most interesting and dynamic in terms of you know their life uh, their uh their, whatever their story is their ability to communicate their entertainment factor whatever it is you take the eight most interesting of each and that's your show regardless of what their makeup is i think if you just looked at it from a neutral perspective you would probably end up with a, a lot more diverse cast every year if you're not oh, you, know what? you make a in. very that's a very good point peter type, type uh, but the people. yeah but the problem is is they just go out looking for these types yeah, yeah, that yeah, we, sorry, need look, yeah, totally. we need so, you know, a lot of, and, we need one black Elton guy Grodner, we need, elton grodner is a lot to blame for this too it's her show she's the showrunner uh, all, all of them are get all of without, them are without her you know what i mean so like but she's like top showrunner like hbrc like then doesn't get past her. So like for her yeah. to approve this shit season after season, you know what I mean? Always glorifying mediocre whiteness. Like <laughs> hey, I'm over Parker, it. what you doing? <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Like I'm over it. And I wasn't gonna watch the season if it wasn't for Dave on being on. I'm just being real. 
Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm re- happy that Devon is on as well. She's a great, uh, she's a great cat. Uh, listen, Devon, not the greatest player, but she's got a huge fan base. She's a good challenge player, though. Yeah. Now, everybody keeps saying that, she but I don't, I don't watch she the, challenge. Good in the challenge. Well, it doesn't make any difference to me what she, she did. It down in the challenge. We're talking about Big Brother, and she hasn't she hasn't been the best Big Brother player, period. But she's a huge personality, and the fans love her. And you know, in the first All Stars. Um, there was a lot of people like Howie and um, uh, Jace didn't belong on there. There's a whole bunch of people that did. Boogie didn't belong on there. Um, but, you know, some of the people ended up going because they had like a Kaser. Like Kaser's a perfect Kaser, example. absolutely. Yeah. Kaser, Kaser's like, Kaser's been evicted three times in two seasons and never <laughs> made the jury. He never made the jury. He never yeah. made the fucking jury. He's not a good Big Brother player. So, um, but they have a big fan base and the fans like him. So, you know, they deserve a spot back. And Devon falls into that 100%. Yeah. So, um, but when they go back to pick their, the, the black guy to put on the season, on an all-star season, like, who do they have to pick from? We have, like, um, Kevin. It's a short list. <laughs> Kevin, which is, he's a black guy that's gay, that was cast because he's a black guy and gay. And but big- imagine wasting a spot on Christmas. I mean, you could have put Jody in that motherfucker. Somebody who season after season used her likeness as a joke, time yeah. after time, not even giving her a shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah. David would be All perfect severe. for like a second chances kind of season. I don't have a problem with them bringing him back. I have a problem with them bringing him back on this season and Christmas too. And Christmas is, like, you know, what's so funny? It's like Christmas, like. Well, you know, my game was going so well. I was doing great until Whistle Dick broke my foot. And then I had to change gears and look at how good I did. It's like, bitch, you were dragged. You were yeah. fucking dragged to the end because you dragged were and drugged. the best. <laughs> I mean, that's all. Up. So uh, uh, when you have a girl that with a broken leg that wins a sprinting competition, you know the season is shit. Right? right? That's great. Yeah, so, it's, uh, I don't know. I, 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 think, I, I was love, worried about her biting, biting uh, her ankle though on this. I, that, that dude, was I was thinking that. I'm like, how great would that be? That like, was, they did not plan that at all. Like that competition was an <laughs> ankle breaker. Did you see people? Ian, yeah, Ian, Ian I was broken. Ian was shit. limping. He was limping after he like <laughs> fell off of the first one. I hate when they do stuff like that. You're not supposed to like hurt people. Um, Oh, I would be very curious to hear what production's rationale is for their all-star selection criteria because yeah, yeah, I think this, it's this actually quite. Cast. It, it's well, quite. I, think I, I actually it. It enjoyed the cast. So my personal criteria, if it was me making the decision in hierarchical order, it would be winner, great player, exceptional personality, and then fan favorite. And yeah, I think uh, hold that, on, not have uh, hold the phone right here, <laughs> and not yeah, have no code. Right uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Big Brother, uh, Big Brother All Stars one had one winner. That's the so one the winner. Continuation to that point was that so much of the the icon creation, the legendary building of the characters um, in Seven was during Seven. So I think at the time you had a lot of question marks of people that maybe shouldn't have been there and people who definitely should have been there, like June. June should have been on All Stars one. She wasn't, you know. And I'm sure there are lots of examples of. They did a little bit differently with the boat in and half and half. You know, they didn't do that this time technically. But I, I would be curious to hear what their selection criteria is because it could just be as simple and as lame and as not thought out as someone who was on the show. <laughs> it's it's going back to, okay. First off, did you notice that? Did you notice that that, that Dan? was Dan was on the cast. When Dan bowed out, they slipped Memphis in. It's when Paul, Paul was on the cast, when Paul bowed out or was COVID positive or whatever, I mean, it's really weird that he, uh, I went through this with Rockstar. Rockstar believes him. I call bullshit <laughs> on it. You don't go into you don't go into quarantine for like a week of yeah, two weeks. They, they agree to be on the show. Quit, yeah. After yeah. everything that they did for you, anyhow. Anyhow, Paul leaves. His backup was Josh. Josh was busy doing cocaine off of Paul's ass in a nightclub in Miami and ended up getting COVID. So he's out. 
So then they get Chris. They get Christmas. Look at Rockstar's like, what the? Fuck? No, that wouldn't make, that that wouldn't make sense because <laughs> you're replacing. Look at Parker's down there laughing his ass off. Did you, you wouldn't you know, replace the, Notice a, that they they have someone <laughs> from every single season, starting with season six, moving forward, except for Big Brother Nine and Big Brother Fifteen. There's yeah, someone right, from probably. six, seven, eight, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve. You know, all the way through, except for um, I mean, so they did, they did cover no, their their season no OTT basis. either. So they, well, they, 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 they act like OTT never even took place. Yeah, Robin didn't cast that season, so they like always Not ignore him. That's a damn shame because OTT was good. Yeah, yeah. Was. OTT was good. The fan base for OTT were a bunch of assholes. <laughs> I was I was gonna fly to LA and beat the shit out of Parker. I hated him during that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like un, he was unfucking bearable. Uh, who, are, who are you rooting for in OTT, Parker? We were on opposite sides. Are you kidding me? He was uh, 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 Jason. I hated Jason. All the marginalized hated people hated I was Jason for all of the marginalized or marginalized folks. That's Jason's right. a really nice guy. He's a, you know, he's a legitimately nice guy. I, I like him Jason. a lot. I, I like, I, I'm, I'm friends with Morgan. I'm friends with Alex. I'm friends with, um, from, with Danielle from that season. And Danielle will be on uh, Dick at Night this season for sure. As a matter of fact, I was considering asking her to do like a weekly slot, but like everything kind of like fell into place and I ended up not asking her. But I really like Danielle. Um, do you, do you, have you met her, Parker? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she, seems, she, she seems really nice. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, I really like her. So um, I'm surprised they haven't cast her on. She's a two first. She's black and she's a lesbian. There you go. Uh, Christmas has no business being on this show, on this season. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we were talking about um, second you know, chances. She yeah, she took third place, but she's like. You remember, everybody remember Jerry from Big Brother 10? Vince, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. He's looking jacked. Did you see that picture of him today? He's a beast. Uh, and she, but she falls more into the, into the Jerry category than she does, like, the Janelle I took a third place. Right? Wait, who? Oh, Chris. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, let's be real. Let's go down the, let's go down the entire cast and let's, like, you know, give our opinion. Um, we might as well start with Potter. Um, uh, this is what I'm worried about. Me and Cody like don't get along at all. I don't like Cody. We've talked like so much shit. Uh, he tried to start a fight with me at like a charity event one time, and I'm afraid that Cody being HOH. I'm afraid that Cody being HOH will target Danielle just because oh. Oh. she's my daughter. Do so, you really think like he'd be, someone would be that short sighted? One dude. His brother did it to Tiffany because she was Vanessa's yeah. sister. What the fuck are you talking about? He uh, said yeah. Cody has, Cody did has the a little exact bit more same reason, thing. Uh, are you high? Yeah. Cody, Cody seems like to be a little bit more like not. Be more stable. Not headed like. Paul. What are you talking about? He said he said he's not stable himself without Derek being there. What, what the Derek <laughs> said? You guys forget that Derek always. Yeah. Went, Cody was always like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to explode on them. I'm going to explode on And then Derek would take him to the side, and he'd talk him off the ledge. And he's like, I'll, I'll give you a cookie later. I forgot about you that. behave now. Yeah. And Derek, Derek did that not with, just with him, but with the whole house. Yeah. He like, kept the whole house, like yeah, yeah. a big wet blanket on the house. Um, so uh, Cody without Derek, um, I have a feeling that you're going to see a different Cody. I'm telling you right I now. Thought it I thought it was really interesting that um, in his chat with Julie, he basically said, you know, whether it's true or not, but let's assume that it is, that when he walked in the house, all of the faces that he saw were not people that were kind of in his Big Brother community orbit. So, I mean, no, or I, I haven't, what he said was, I haven't spoke to. He said that like two or three times to Julie, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what Omarosa texts me? She's like, did Cody just tell Omarosa that he's been pre-gaming and it is an alliance? <laughs> With some other people? Uh, maybe. You could interpret it that way for sure. Um, okay, hold I, on. Hold this thought. Let's, let's examine this whole thing here. Remember Derek in Big Brother 18 put an alliance together with Polly, Asian James, and Nicole Rissa Fury Franzel? Remember? <laughs> Does everybody remember that alliance? <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Yes, they pre-gaged well, for that season. If Cody is going in and he's <laughs> talking to and he's talking to Derek, you don't think that, <laughs> that Nicole Whistle Fury Franzel is gonna talk to Derek again and he's not gonna get them together in an alliance again? I'm telling you right now they're in an alliance. And that whole thing about <laughs> Derek going online and going, I'm not really happy with Nicole right now was all fucking smokescreen in order to divert from the fact that he put them in a fucking alliance together. Everything that Derek says, you just assume it's bullshit and go the opposite way and you're gonna be right. What are you giggling about, Parker? The wrist of fury? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, control, man. Yeah, uh, yeah listen. <laughs> no, I I definitely think it's it's very likely that he has that everybody has at least one pre-game ally. It would be stupid to go in there without at least one. But I think that a lot of people, especially Cody, who's kind of a later stage Big Brother player, might have expected the bulk of the cast to be as I did, skewed like 16 to 20, uh, 21. I thought that was going to be like the majority of the makeup of the cast. But like you said, you've got basically representation from almost every season yeah. going back as far as six. So if I'm a recent big brother player and my um, uh, like connections are only in the, if I have an extreme recency bias in the player base, then I'm going to look around the room and, you know, as Cody did feel a little, a little lost. I mean, he wasn't the most lost person. That was obviously David, but maybe he felt a little less comfortable than he would have thought he, w you know, coming in as a pretty recent player. One of the things that I love that Cody said was basically said that I'm here to prove that I'm not Derek's bitch like I was in Big Brother 16, right? Uh, and I was, oh, and I love the fact. Did you hear him when he said his goodbye to his dad? That I've been posting. That was great. I yeah. call him. I've been calling him. Yeah, not this time. Yeah, I'm I, I've, been, I've been calling him Daddy Kisser since Big Mother 16. That was funny. So you know, I'm taking direct credit for that mug of bullshit right there, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and by the way, if you forgot, Cody sits down when he pees. Um, so I'm not real happy with the fact that Cody is uh, the first A2H. Um, let's go down the list. Um, <sighs> it, it, you know, they talked to Danielle, and um, uh, <laughs> Danielle made it clear that she still thinks she should have won Big Brother 8. But um, she, what, one of the things that she said that I think is the most important thing that she said, because I know her game very well, um, is the fact that she needs to work on her social game and she's like you know i'm strong i'm strong in uh strategy and i'm a good competitor and i'm really working on my social game or something along those lines this time yeah. and that has always been what's been an enormous hole in her big brother game so um listen i'm i'm rooting for her and uh uh in her corner so uh, uh i hope that she does um i just know how stupid people piss her off and she just like yeah, she's like me in that way, and she just doesn't put up with it, and she'll tell him flat out. I saw a clip of her, like, telling Rachel, she just get the, she's like, just get the hell out of my room. Um, I've had enough of you or something like that. And I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, Davon, uh, first impressions of Davon. Everybody keeps talking about the challenge. Davon, since the challenge, um, she's going to be a competitor. I think you guys are, like, going a little overboard. But I'm sure that she's she looks. It's only because she gets so much like unnecessary hate. Like, why do you hate her so much? Like, who hates her? Like, like yeah, the, I, the Twitter, the Twitter world. Like, like hates her. I, I Twitter just, hates not, everybody. Just, <laughs> I'm just saying, no, I'm not like just the hating. Like, it's like she can't even fucking breathe sometimes. Oh, why is she there? Really? Oh, I don't know. Listen, I put up. Davon is a very popular character, as she should be. She is a, yeah. she's a super no, entertaining yeah, presence is, on the show. Still, she still has, like, you know, there's always these fans. There's always that core. Listen, fans. on Big Brother 18, I, I thought she had no business going back on. She was out second. I didn't think she should have been there. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, it really annoyed me the way she voted. She voted for a woman just because, Nicole, just because she was a woman. And because of Devon, we got fucking Paul two seasons in a row. So I got a chip on my shoulder when it comes to Devon. 
That's fair. I mean, that just that goes, ultimately goes to speak that that hits on two things. One, that Big Brother is intended to be a reflection of its time. Davon saying, "I'm going to vote for a woman." During that time, uh, I don't know if that was before or after Me Too, but it was at least building up to it at the very least. That's very women empowering movement. So her doing that—that's a reflection of the real world. And uh, her coming in from an, like another show, and she said more success to try to gain success on the show that gave her popularity. I think as a narrative, that's an that's an interesting one to follow for her to see if she can kind of get over the hump, go deeper into the game as people would kind of hope um, that someone like her uh, could. I think third time's the charm with Davon. I think she'll do get a little bit further than she did the last time. I, well, think, I, think, um, I think she's not going to, I don't think she's going to be hot headed. Bailey's going to do that. Like Bailey, you know, <laughs> Bailey's going to be the one to blow up. But you know, what? Yeah. but uh, you know, that was supposed to be the, the narrative with Zakia and Devon. And yeah. then we, we all remember in the sequester house where we all thought that Devon was going to punch Polly in the face in that scene. Right. Yeah. Which I remember. He, yeah. It's pretty intense. Deserved. So, uh, but so we are, I, like, I, I think mean, it all just depends. I think that the ceiling is going to bring a lot of bad feelings, and I think it's going to put a lot of these people inside the house are going to be mad. I think that ultimately, like right now, everybody's kumbaya and hugging, and oh, Julie's like, "Can you sit down?" No, we're no, we're hugging, Julie. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know, and all of this kumbaya bullshit. I think that ultimately, the house is going to end up divided, old school, new school. Um, I've thought that from oh. the get-go. Uh, Where is that line of delineation, though? Because you've got such a widespread group. Where it do you is, it is, it is pretty line? diverse, yeah. I, I would consider Enzo old school. It depends on who they align with, too, some of these people. Yeah. Right. I, 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 think, I would answer, consider answer, there's answer some 13. in the middle. Yeah, some in the middle. I would say, um, like, uh, Enzo from 12 would be old school. Ian, I would definitely consider new school. And anything above 16, there's, like, no question. All of them are new school. Nicole so, and Christmas hugged a really long time. They really did. Which Nicole? Oh, that's interesting to know. Nicole Rissa Fury. Rissa Fury. Fury. Wow. <laughs> Start calling her wow. The, the CBS I, I, master. <laughs> I think that the um the players from earlier seasons actually are going to have a huge advantage <laughs> in this game because so much of Big Brother, as we've talked about, is social game and as you said with Danielle this is the thing that she's going to try to focus on to round out her game so you've got people who were part of the experience years ago and I know that at least some small part of them has continued to think of what they might do if they get back in or how to change their games or they're just going to be so much more patient so much more learned I think they they've got so much more opportunity to watch the game as you've got to remember that the people are the the people are who they are from a very young age. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. Yeah, we'll people see how much. Yeah, we'll see how much they change. You I can don't know. I say think... I'm changed. You can say I'm older, but then let's let's see what happens. Um, you sure. know, that's it, it will. It, it will be, but I I think I would think just speculating that they would have more patience. Um, than a newer player who like if you play like most players who play back to back or within like two or three years they have a really hard time because their mind still haven't adjusted like from the first time that they played and so they're kind of still in bizarre world when they go back into the house so the longer you are removed from the big brother process the more clarity of mind you should theoretically have going back in to at least attempt to you know elongate your stay in the house but two, would have been a lot of times what happens is, and you look at this and it's happened a whole bunch of times, I'm going to call out Netta just because she's like, she's just at the top of my mind. Um, no other reason. But you get these people that have all their fans telling them in their ear how great they are and how they should have won their season. And they become delusional. They start, they start buying into it. Totally. Um, 100%. And, and then they go in and they think that they're so much more than they are. Like Nicole and like, like Netta. Uh, was shown that she's really not. I mean, Ica just fucked her up on that season. 
Uh, so another exper- uh, the example is a little weird because she was given this totally uh, bizarre power right from the beginning to get go of the game, which would have put a gigantic target on anyone. If you're immune for like half the game, the second you become on, on like non-immune, you're likely to be targeted. And it, it's playing the game on easy mode, you're going to develop a pretty huge ego. So like, I don't necessarily think that's a great ex- example of your point, but I do agree with your point uh, that, you know, um, the fans can really. Uh, Dude, it happens the all the her. time. But it happens all the sure. time with these people. Um, but I think it happens more with the recent uh, house guests because they're more social media active. Like, well, the and social well, media and era of the show. So far, it's like um, them as people. I've seen it happen with them as people too. And the worst ones was Big, Big Brother sixteen and your season rock star twenty. They, like they <laughs> like twenty. 20 and when i'm watching the show i'm like i like both of these i like both of these alliances for different reasons you guys were like the stupid fun cool people and them on the other side they were like like athletic and they were serious and they're strategic yeah, and cool I, gotta, I appreciate that too um but looking at them i'm like there's not really anybody that i'm not gonna like except for caitlin she's just a dumb gun but um well, Caitlin is a gem of a person. How dare you say that? <laughs> Let me go talk to her uncle, dead Waldo grandpa. Anyhow, um, getting off of Caitlin, so to speak. Um, where the fuck was I going with all this? Uh, oh, I thought that they would all be like super cool people. Then I actually met them, and a lot of them were just like assholes. Like they were just like huge egos. That's the social media influence. 16, yeah, I mean, but 16 was like that too. I- you, I love social media, so you can't blame people being assholes on that. No, I'm saying it could oh, potentially I, have an adverse effect. I'm not saying that it inevitably has an adverse effect. I think effect. they just all start buying into their own bullshit. Like, it was a great season, da 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 and they're just like, yeah, we're the best. We're the best ever, da 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 I remember being at a, a charity event here in Orlando. Zach like, Ranch, what? right? Zach One Ranch, like, right? I, I think it was, it was that time yeah, that, I, yeah. that I threw Zach Ranch's phone. But... Yeah. Um, but it was funny because I was there talking to Janelle and Janelle looks at me and she's like, what is with these Big Brother 16 people? Yeah, they think ridiculous. that they're like, 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 like real or stars. Something. Yeah, it was like yeah. really weird. And then I'm standing there and that idiot Zach Rantz is standing with, uh, I'm friends with Dina from uh, Jersey Shore. She was on a different show with me, a VH1 show. And so I got her going to that. So we're like standing in a circle and Zach's like, I'm the biggest star here. Like, who says that first off? But he, like, literally said, like, I'm the biggest Andy. star here. And, and like, Andy, everybody, everybody looks at him and goes, like, Dina's right here. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Go sit down, boy. Uh, yeah. His mom hired him an agent and everything. Like, he, like, I, how do you guys – yeah, and TBS will never have him back again because his ego got out of control. That's why he's never been back. Zach Rance wouldn't have been back 100%. Yeah, guaranteed so. No, the fans sure. absolutely loved him but his ego just like was gone insane how do you guys think that devon is going to do this season you guys that are being quiet rockstar Portia, <laughs> and vincent get in this conversation how do you guys think that um devon's gonna do i've actually never seen i've i've never seen devon play i'm a fan of her of her gift that has gone widespread before i even knew what big brother was she's the cat oh the house family. exit <laughs> the house exit gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't even know what that was, and we were using that on Facebook before I but even knew what Big Brother. It's so was. funny when yeah. I'm like, like just like cruising Twitter and like like looking at political tweets or something, and then I see an Alyssa with like like water spraying yeah, out her crazy. nose when right. she's laughing, like, or like a Big Brother gif, and it's just like so. It's like out of place and just makes me laugh. So I know exactly what you're talking about, and that gif of. Uh, Devon is huge. Widespread. I mean, yeah. that, that yeah. in itself, just that moment in time, to me, makes her an all-star because that shit is everywhere. It all- like, you know, that's that's iconic. Like, if you yeah. can just to recognize her, her face is definitely more she's recognizable. Be- yeah, she's become part of pop culture. People yeah, might not know her name, but they know that, that yeah, black girl leaving that door. We- and I, and I, and I, and I, and they, you know how they love to use black people's gifts. Yeah, but I love it. But you know, I, I feel, I, and I feel a little different than Parker Fields. I love Davon, but but she doesn't represent the African American community. Like, she does I mean, not. 
It, they they don't need to have her on the show. If, if damn it, just don't cast a black girl. Get get on the black a black get on the black guy in there. Like she she played twice now in the first. Why? What what has she done? Well, like, you, know, well, listen. you know their Rolodex on African Americans is like that. You know, well, uh, you want to talk about? Shit, but they could have they, they put they could have put Lawan in there and not uh, instead of her. Like, what what has she done? Like, Dude, what about, about who the, what about what about Kaser? Kaser's got no business being there. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, that's, that's true. Real. Kaser has evolved from being like the young hunk to Chicken George character, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> His evolution he, is complete. Yeah, he had the polo shirt with now, the stains and everything. Like, you know what's <laughs> you know what's so funny is either he's like in his 40s but he's he like, looks he's old like, yeah that's well, because he's losing his hair and stuff hair, it's right, funny because no, i was talking still. to i was talking to vincent the other night and i'm like do you realize that danielle is almost kale's age from big brother eight and he's like oh my god it's like <laughs> yeah, i think she i think she's like two years younger danielle the first time she was in the house was 20 years old yeah right she was that's 20 years old she's right. gonna be 34 in like two weeks or something uh 20 right. Yeah, uh, that's a yeah. huge difference 15. in like she goes from being a kid to being like a mother like that's a her uh, big Ian too, story, Ian too is Ian like too. Ian looks like a man now where he was like a little bit right? that, I'm not saying, I'm a man. Uh, that was a years, that was a very funny line though right? right he's like I'm a man I was a boy now I'm, I'm not a kid anymore oh. yeah, yeah. yeah I got a girl I've been drinking like, milk now I got yeah, a girlfriend yeah. I've been fucking now I'm not an <laughs> incel, Julie. I'm not an incel. <laughs> and, and be like, I love I'll be Ian. Now. I love Ian. Night, I <laughs> heard rumors about Ian Beyond, and I called Ian. I text Ian. I go. I heard a rumor about you being on the show, and he's like, "I'll call you in five minutes." And he's like <laughs> swearing. He was swearing up and down. And he's like, "Where did you hear that?" Oh no, they haven't got a hold of me. And then like, as it became more and more clear, and the same with Enzo. And Enzo was, I was getting all these weird, <laughs> cryptic things back from Enzo. And I'm like, whoever is just texting me on Enzo's phone, fuck off. I know you're full of shit. I know that he's on this season. Uh, and Enzo is in our uh, Big Brother Canada versus USA Fantasy Football League every year. And we are so upset that he just, he completely abandoned us and our great fantasy football league to go play Big Brother. We are so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love Enzo. Enzo's a good guy. Um, it's so funny because, like, Reagan from Big Brother 12 has been talking a lot of shit about Enzo being homophobic. And, um, and Reagan's just bitter, um, like, totally bitter. Because not anything ever on the feeds about Enzo being homophobic. And there's a matter of fact, somebody found a clip of Enzo Lane called someone a fag in the house. And Enzo sat him down and like had this long talk with him. And somebody posted that clip of yeah, him. Not. That's just not cool, dude. You sh you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't talk that. You know. And he, but he was cool. I love Enzo. Yeah, Enzo's yeah. a good guy. Um, I didn't appreciate him sticking his head in the refrigerator and eating on, while he's on slop. He was like Jackson <laughs> before Jackson was here. That was uh, some bullshit. But, but he kept the feeds entertaining. And he was he very entertaining on the feeds. Um, yeah. And, but. Here's Enzo. He's keeping his loss streak continued. He was terrible at challenges and competitions, and he's continuing the loss streak. <laughs> Says he wasn't even close on this one. Let's yeah. talk about that. Was this competition really unfair to the women? Because the guys, when they had, they only had to get it in halfway on on that big board, and both times the women were up. They had to in, the bottom. in the corners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, again, this is like a, a symbol of society. Women have to work twice, twice as hard. To get to it's just, it's just <laughs> so, so, it's like, so what are, are, Is it going to be a lot of symbolism this season? What are we doing? Well, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, and then even, even, even yeah. going for the HOH, it's four dudes and two girls instead of, you know... Even, even before that, Dick, you see how they how they paired up the four people. Like like Tyler was in there against who uh, Ian and and Kevin, and then oh, the I wrote two. it down. Tyler was against Ian, Kevin, and Enzo. Yeah, he, he was supposed to win that one. That that uh, he was totally <laughs> supposed to win that yeah, one. Yeah, uh, you know, you know was having a fit back there. <laughs> yep. God damn it, Tyler! Tyler yep. <laughs> and the first yep. one, 
The first one was supposed to be Christmas and Danny because it was Danny, Devon, Nicole, ear, ear, and yep. Christmas. Christmas. Either one. Um, yep. Yep. Mm. You're going to be all season with you. All <laughs> ear, ear. All season. What is that? Ah. Ear, ear. That? Like you that? What are you talking about? She don't know what that is. Uh, Rockstar like doesn't uh, know what that is. Rockstar's only <laughs> seen her season. <laughs> it's, a, it's a killer, killer like a psycho. No, no, no. no. I've seen more than Because she's going to slay the competition all summer long, god damn it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after. <laughs> all right. Um, the third group was uh, Janelle, Bailey, Keisha, and uh, uh, Nicole from... Big Brother 22. I was shocked that she was the one that won. Little tiny Nicole with the spaghetti arms ended she, up pulling it off. I was, like, very surprised. She's so lucky. Like, I don't know if you guys, when last season was going on, most of the competitions that she won that got her were luck competitions. Like, she is lucky. The girl is lucky. Like, she wins them luck competitions that you're like, who's going to win it? The wild card. It's Nicole. Yeah. Oh, good for you know, Listen, good for her. But. Yeah, yeah. She it's good. Of the competition, I think. I mean, I won that same competition during my season, and it was all about having a steady hand. And I feel like you know, girls were a better shot. We have a better steady hand. So more patience. I wonder why. <laughs> Time limit, though. Time limit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong Nicole. Sorry, wrong Nicole. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, and the fourth group was uh, Kaser, Cody, Memphis, and uh, David. Yeah. Um, and Kaser was not meant to win in that group at all. <laughs> we all knew it was going to be Cody. Why wasn't Cody like uh, going up against Tyler? Tyler, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so that I would be interesting to see how they how if they join you know, up or if they like, you know, bump heads. Listen, you know, I'm, I am like, team, you know, the alpha. I'm team mm -hmm. old school. Okay. I'm team old Me school. Too. My biggest yeah. worry is Tyler and Cody getting together and winning some comps and picking off the old school people. Mm -hmm. And because those two are, they are the comp beast this season. Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't know if Danielle, we'll see if Danielle still has, still has it. Um, I mean, she, Danielle, listen, Danielle was fucking phenomenal at comps in both eight and 13, 13 yeah. you know, but, um, but, you know, she's like nine years older than in 13. She's had a baby, um, <coughs> you become a different person. So, um, your 34 year old body after a baby is not the same as a 20 year old body or 25 year old. body. It's just not. So, um, we'll have to see, uh, what do you guys think about uh, Rissa Fury, Nicole? Any fans here? Any fans? I love Nicole. The, well, Vince, Vince is trying not to laugh, but I saw the smile crack in the corner of his mouth. <laughs> well, I think it's a good time we're going to say I'm wearing a great head shirt because I went shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> hey, because. So proceeds go back to you know gray whites and hair. Really Yeah, Nicole's trying to be the second time winner, huh? Mm. Yeah, two for three. The incredible streak. I'm gonna root for Nicole so goddamn hard all season because I feel like the internet hates her so much, and I'm actually like I'm a really good friend of hers. You're gonna hear Dick going. She ain't doing it this season. Too much. No. Just kill them all. Hey, you know what? You say she ain't doing it. She's not on the block yet, bitch. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> you will never know. Ear, ear. Whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe her and homeboy had a conversation pre-game, you know, hey honey, whatever it takes. Yeah. yeah, she can get one new showman for every time that Victor was evicted from the game. So she's got like a few that she can get through oh and all stars. That edit that they gave her when she like went in there to get married or proposed to or whatever, and like like the on eighteen when she was laying in bed with Coy the entire season and they like found pictures of her and Victor together like randomly in the house it was like <laughs> such a weird and awkward thing. 
um, to watch. Um, uh, does anybody else have anything nice to say about Nicole? Uh, Rockstar, you have nope. something nice to say about everybody. Um, well, I think that uh, <laughs> as she is the apparent uh, Twitter overlord of CBS, I have nothing but high praises to sing in hopes that, you know, she can voodoo me on to the next show or whatever. <laughs> but like, <laughs> it's so weird to me that they put her, I never understood why they brought her back the first time. I, I just, I, it still kind of trips me out. I don't it's understand that. Gordon. I find Maybe it brought, white women. All of the, all of the people yeah. that they brought back were from the same eviction, um, uh, eviction week except for one they they uh, one of them was off because it should have been amanda and it wasn't because they don't acknowledge 15 that was the gimmick that season it was they were all from the same boot week oh, oh really i didn't know oh, that. i didn't know that. yeah <laughs> and it should it, it was sequential and because they had two people from one season dave on was probably the exception and it should have like the slot should have been amanda but because they don't acknowledge amanda they brought back two people from that season instead you know, it's so funny because um, – Or something like that. I there, was, there was so much racist stuff said on 15. And, like, if you watch the TV show, like, they acknowledge racism, like, a little tiny bit. But if you watch the feeds, <coughs> it was never fucking ending, man. It was like – it just went on and on and on. There's, like, a bigotry supercut on, uh, on YouTube of Big Brother 15. It's like, and then you got people like Andy out here, like talking shit, like he was like champion for black folks all of a sudden. Like, uh, yeah, and he what wasn't. World, are we living in right uh, now? Like, Andy he sat there Andy, and he sat Andy, there and he he heed and he ha ha all the time and didn't say nothing. So and now all of a sudden he's he like also called Twitter. he also called Kim, uh, Kim Jong Un. Kim from that Helen. Helen, Helen, yeah. Helen, yeah. Helen, 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 not Kim. Sorry, Helen. Yes, yeah, yeah and that's he, just like. You know, yeah, and then like, like not know, he innocent. Here, he wants to sit up here and act like he's like so woke. He's yeah, same with same all. with Jackson. That was that was a way to try to get back on this season. Jackson, Mickey did the same thing. Black Lives Matter. Uh, yeah, 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 he tried to do uh, the same yeah, thing. And Aaron, he looked like Aaron somebody too. was trying to. Get, he yeah. looked like somebody was trying to force him to eat his peas when he said yeah. Black Lives Matter. Yes, yeah. and I believe. <laughs> Well, we better. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, square face ass. Up. Yeah, off off camera, they were like holding a forty four, like a yeah. foot away from his head, making. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he could say that. Like nobody needed to hear that. You know who's like, taking? Take your, take your racist ass on and spend that check <laughs> on whatever you want to spend it on, because ain't nobody got time for it. And you know who's taking a lot of it? And you know, people are misinterpreting like what I'm saying in the beginning, like. I kept saying, I'm team old school. Tyler has to go first. One of the old school people needs to win the first HOH, and Tyler has to go home. Because Cody and Tyler together will be very dangerous. They will be. Yep, okay? But the problem is, it's like, Cody's, a, Cody's a, just a dumbass. He took all of his instructions from Derek. Um, he's not the brightest guy. He fucking took Derek over Victoria to the final two. And it cost him a half a million dollars. So... But Tyler's smart, and Tyler has strategy. So yeah. if they got together, they, like, seriously, they could be dangerous. Like, one of them needs to go so this doesn't yeah. become an alliance. Um, so when I talk shit about Tyler, it's not because they don't like Tyler. I like Tyler in 20. It's because I don't, I, don't, I don't want him. I want him gone because I'm team old school, bitches. That's all. Not uh, that I'm a hater or anything. Uh, but Tyler does seem to be getting a lot of hate this season. Is it just me? Really? You guys seen it too? Already? Well, that's surprising. I, I, is it already he's getting surprised hate? to hear Tyler hate? Hey, hey, one, he's probably one of the. He, he definitely is in the conversation of best Big Brother players to never win for sure. That entire season was dominated by his social play, in my opinion. Um, uh, and I think he is probably the most. He is the number one. He should be everybody's number one target in the house he is like he occupies that like um I number, one number one male draft pick <laughs> kind of position in the game um cody is i think a, a, a number two but i think tyler can be that derek uh, type figure that's what cody, i'm but, saying that's yeah, exactly I think, I think what i'm saying on. those two there's like 
you can't let those two get together. You just can't let it happen. And I think that I think if Cody targets an old school female, which I have a feeling he's going to, I think that a lot of people are going to be upset. And I think there's going to be, I think we're going to, I think we could see a good split in the house this season. I'm praying for a good split in the house this season. For definitely sure. not. I don't definitely don't see a bunch of followers and everybody just falling in line and mm-hmm. voting like That's a good you know, point. the house or whatever. Yeah, I don't see that at all. There's I, I probably going to be a, a lot of independent objectives for sure. I think that with some people like are going to be outshined, like David. Um, well, that always happens. Well, I, I just think that he and and Nicole, <laughs> the non ear ear Nicole, the Big Brother Twenty One Nicole. I think that she's going to be kind of fall in the cracks because she's not like this big personality like the majority of the rest of the people. But um, that could be to her advantage well, though. Yeah, that yeah. could definitely be to her advantage. Uh, for sure. You could just blend yeah. in and, and kick it while everybody's getting all loud and big personality and she just kind of, she's kind of mellow, you know. Is this sweet room? Is that for two people to like sleep in? Oh, the safe room, or what do they call it? The safety suite. Safety suite. Oh, safety suite. Um, I have a that feeling. I have a feeling it's a competition where two people get immunity for the week every week. Uh, it's just Grodner trying to battle the block. Kind of like that, there's right? no. There's not going to kind of put people in the room. And- yeah, dude, there's no showmances. <laughs> like they're all married, right? Yeah, okay. try it, yeah, right? All of them are married. They, that's probably what they said. And that's probably what they said in the meeting. And she was like, "Well, let's just put a room in there. Let's put two people in there and see what." You happens. never know, right? She's like, Enzo, yeah. give me this, guys. Give me this, guys. Enzo single. <laughs> Enzo single, and we got here, here, Nicole. We could make it happen. Well, uh, uh, I proudly announced he was divorced on the show, which was hilarious. Julie was like, okay, who else? Anybody else? <laughs> At first she's like, well, we don't want to talk about divorce. Okay, who else is divorced? Oh, there's three of you. Uh, I do think it's, um, I do, I do think it's really interesting the fact, and they obviously shined a light on it. Who on slept the with their husband through sexual, uh, uh, <laughs> rape oh, charges, question, sexual yeah, assault sure. charges. Who here slept um, with their husband? Oh, Julie. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, Julie, Julie Chen Moonbez. Sorry. Oh, God. Interesting that oh my God. Two, two characters that occupy kind of the same slot. They're both the second in the a winning combination. So obviously, you know, the, it was the Hitman versus the Renegade. Kind of, you've got the the two number twos. <laughs> that was so scenarios. weird, right? Yeah. But that's interesting because you've got Cody, who represents that in a uh, he's in the much younger, more recent version. And Memphis, who's, you know, older, he's got a family, he's got a successful business and stuff now. You know, he's the more mature version of that character. So it's like youth versus experience. Um, and I, you know, of people who occupy the same slot, because as I was saying before, so many characters in Big Brother are slotted into these kind of roles or they're remembered for their, their place in an alliance or whatever it may be. And so now we have a very unique opportunity to have two people who were those types at, at two completely different points parts in the chronology of the show and now they're going against one another so i think as a viewer for me, can, that's compelling not necessarily watch. they're trying to pit them against each other like yeah, they end up working it. but it's like oh so you think the renegades suck and you think the hitmen suck yeah. oh no, 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 but you know i actually think it might have the, the opposite effect though i think gladiators take your position I, 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 I think it, I would predict that it would al- align the two of them as opposed to push them. I, I think that, that would be my prediction. Well, one of the reasons that I keep talking about old school versus new school is there's an age gap too. There, you have an age gap of like 20 somethings and then you have a, the next is like the rest of them are like around 40. They're in their early 40s or barely under it, like 39. So that's yeah. good. And that always is like a divide too. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. I just see, I just see it. I might be wrong, but, um, that's the way I see it. Uh, you know, goddamn well that Janelle and Casey are playing together. Like, they, <laughs> like there ain't no question about that. They've been in the same fucking alliance for 15 years now since season <laughs> yeah. The sovereign two, the only two. Uh, yeah. So, and I can see, um, 
I can see, I don't know. They also have other friends in there. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, Janelle played with Ian, so that's theoretically a connection. Even yeah, though Ian's Janelle played kind with of Ian. more old. Their new school. No, but like, that, Ian's right on the cut. Yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's a big, con that is a connection. You're on the same yeah, season exactly, with somebody. Of course. Yeah. Sure. I mean, look at I, I got like I was on fucking season thirteen for six days, and I got Portia and Keith yeah. there. Uh, mm -hmm. There right. it is. If there's like a connection, yeah, those so, bonds are season. real. Um, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 evil dick. Is that going to say That's right. I, I, wow. It, uh, yeah. He does have a line that he won't cross, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross it. Janelle's got too much goddamn Botox. Okay, that's all I was gonna say. <laughs> all I was gonna a, say. Dude, I, I love so Janelle. I love Janelle, but there's just too much Botox going on there. That's all. I don't care what he's got. Uh, and mean, by the way, Janelle I, gave me permission to talk shit about her on the show while she was in the house. Yes, we talked before she went in. Um, I love Janelle though. I, I love Janelle too. Uh, she's yeah. one of my best Big Brother friends. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what are what are we thinking about? We talked about Ian. We talked about Enzo. What about Kevin? Nobody's talking about Kevin. I love Kevin. I'm gonna Why? be the biggest. Y'all are gonna get annoyed. Why? Me. <laughs> right. Why? Is is it because he's Kevin. black and gay, or because he has a great personality that you love? I just, I've never seen him before tonight and I'm obsessed. Oh, he's great. You're in for a treat. <laughs> I'm obsessed. You're in for, yeah. I literally he's, was like, this is, Kevin is everything. And I'm, Kevin, he's great on the feed. Yeah, I've he's never, I've never even, I didn't even know. I'm so, I was, he was. so it was a he's an executive now, so you never know. He might Kevin, be a little toned down. <laughs> Kevin's a very, very nice guy. I found Kevin very boring on season 11. I think that um, all the players that season took each other out. And I did a round table with, um, it was me, Janelle, Boogie, and Danielle Reyes. And they brought us in to sit down with Julie and talk about the season. It was down to final three. Because these final three were so fucking boring, they had to do like a segment because that. they couldn't carry it. So... On the pre-interview, one of the producers, like my producer dude, pulls me out and he's like, okay, so Dick, so what do you think about this final three? And I'm like, worst final three in history. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, you can't yes, say that. Man. I go, then don't tell Julie not to ask me that. He goes, that's <laughs> my answer. Give me a different question. It was Kevin, uh, Jordan, and Natalie. And at that time, Natalie. Uh, at that yeah. time, Maga, Maga, Natalie. Yeah, at yeah. God. Mm -hmm. At that time in season eleven, that was the worst final three that there had been. Um, yeah, Russell and Jeff took each other out, and uh, oh, um, was it worse than nine or on par with nine? No, nine's was, final three was not thrilling <laughs> either. But you know what? Adam, everybody like shits on Adam, but after Adam won, everybody was like, you know, on the Adam train. Uh, including yeah, my yeah. daughter, by the way, is like, I picked him first. I picked him first. I didn't like him because I couldn't even understand the motherfucker. He's the <laughs> only dude that spoke English that had subtitles <laughs> underneath, like all the time, because he just couldn't understand that. He like, had a muffle yeah, yeah. of marbles or something. Yeah, he was a weirdo. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> when you lay in bed with someone, he, okay, season nine, Parker was on nine. They paired everybody else, everybody up, and you had to sleep with your partner or whatever it was like, yeah, a love, love, like a love season right and yeah they they paired it was adam, trash. It was bullshit. They, they paired adam up with you didn't she fall in love parker what <laughs> you I got my back the off. <laughs> they, they, they partnered sheila up with adam and adam jacked off in bed with sheila in bed with them every night like i would have been like banging on the door complaining like really yeah, that's horrible Parker, would you be okay with it if we slept the same bed and I was jerking <laughs> off next to you? No. I uh, see. I, I didn't. And I feel the same. First of all, yeah, because you're not my type. Maybe if you're my type, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might touch, you know, whatever. But no. 
Um, I, I think that uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, unfortunately, feels like a pre juror to me, if only because of this. Um, he seemed to be playing his character all night. Uh, in that's Kevin. All of his, I, I, is, is it him or is it him on the show? Because those are kind of two different things, right? Like, there's the version of you that production kind of encourages and pushes along, and this is what they want. And then there's kind of you, and it might be the same thing with the volume, either turned up or turned down. But on the show, it's kind of uh, struck as odd to me that he seemed to be the only one being a, like extroverted for the purpose of being extroverted. And in a theoretically more mature season, that might be. Uh, if people think he's just playing up for the cameras, that might uh, turn people off. And I, I don't know. I just I got this weird early boost Kevin vibe. Is, like, Kevin, Kevin, is, Kevin is flamboyant. Kevin is. Yeah, yeah a, I think he's just being. Yeah, that's his personality. I don't think he's playing. Play is it? I don't no, think. I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think it's I, any I'm different wrong. than Frankie Grande floating around in there. I want to be Kevin's friend. I don't know <laughs> how many tweets positive I need to make to make this happen, but that's my goal for BB22. I, I think, uh, I think sure. you'll achieve that goal. I'm sure that you'll be friends with Kevin. It, it, Somebody's it, got to go in the early stage of the game, and for whatever reason, also because I don't know how uh, in touch with the community he is. Like, I don't know what Kevin's connective tissue is with everybody else in the house. I've been in the community for long enough and, and I have a pretty good sense of, of who's kind of around and who's not around and, and who keeps tabs and, and who doesn't keep tabs. And I've never, ever heard anybody say anything about Kevin in terms of like a personal interaction. So I don't know how in the loop he is. Maybe that'll work to his advantage, but I think it's possible. I think he's been out of the big brother like loop world for a while now. Um, but uh, I don't know. The... Uh, See, there's. I know what you're saying that he could be like an easy out early in the game. I. It, it depends. It all depends. These an all star season is different than a regular season. We saw it in the first all stars, and we even saw it in Big Brother Canada Five when it was only half of the cast. The you know, season thirteen prime example. I've given this example a number of times, but I'm going to give it again. There were six of us returning, and there was eight that weren't. Was it eight? Is that, was that the numbers? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. It was not even split, which was. Right, so it was, no. it was six and eight. <clears throat> and while all the new people are downstairs and in the backyard and like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're in the Big Brother house. All six of us returning were up in the HOH, and this is where I'm coming up with the Golden Key strategy and how to get Keith out first. And... Uh, <laughs> I, that was Porsche's fault. Wow. I, Porsche, you I, robbed us of Keith the legend. I had, to, I had, to, I had to break him up. Wow. Yeah. We would have won HOH that first competition. He was in the prime spot. He literally sat on my head for 30 minutes, and then <laughs> we should have won, and he would have still been there. Okay, listen. This is what happened. So everybody knows. Before I went on Big Brother 13, I talked to Janelle. And, oh, who, oh, Portia got booted. She'll be back. She got I, so I, mad. That I was going to talk about Portia. Too. Okay. Yeah. This is what happened. Is I talked to Janelle, and Janelle said, there's going to be a girl on this season that I worked with. Her name is Portia. She loves you. She'll be, uh, um, she'll be faithful or, you know, uh, yeah, loyal, loyal, she'll loyal be, to you. Yeah. She'll be loyal to you. You don't have to worry. And I'm like, excellent. <laughs> then I see Portia and Keith. Oh, here comes Portia. Hold on. Okay. Here's Portia. Okay. Can you hear us? Portia, you abandoned uh, Keith again. <laughs> He's connecting. Her audio is connecting and you're oh. connected. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, so I'm telling the story about Janelle telling me that you're going to be in the house. Okay. okay, so then I get in the house, and after everybody's in bed, I'm up, and Portia's in the diary room. And I'm sitting there with a bowl of cereal right at the living room waiting for her to come out. And when she comes out, I just look at her, and I go, and we go outside, and we had this talk, and we made a deal. And then I see... 
oh, Keith here, all hugging up on my girl like he's going to show her. And I'm like, this, monster. This, motherfucker's gotta, this motherfucker's got to go. I got to be her number one, not this motherfucker. He's got to go. So Keith had to go. Yeah, wow. that's that first goblin right there. You know it. <laughs> you know, I to, I told Keith this a number of times too, and I, I I really do like here it is like nine years later, and dude, I honestly I really do wish that we had like some kind of connection early where we had the that we ended up working together. We was only there six days, but I could have like yeah. things would have been different had it not gone yeah. that way. Oh, yeah. Um, so. You know, I have apologized to Keith, but uh, yeah. um, but you know, it was Keith's fault too because I would walk past Keith and he would look down and away. He would never look me in the eye, like never look me in the eye. Uh, <laughs> oh, not a great video. Yeah. He got to go. He got to go. <laughs> yeah, you just know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you walk into a room and every person looks at you like you just caught them masturbating, they're talking yeah. about you. Okay, they all have like that kind of thing. Instead of like slipping into another conversation, I'm like, these motherfuckers are an alliance. They got to be broken up. That guy's the ringleader. He's got to go. So, all right, what do we guys? What do you guys think about Bailey? Oh, before we get on, um, Rockstar text me. Do you need to leave? Yes, I. Uh, He's getting I work tired. In the morning. Is she, are you People still, still at the work? casino? You're at the casino, right? Yeah, I bartend at 7 a.m. Oh, my yeah. God. Be safe. It's so yeah. depressing. <laughs> you need to get on the night shifts. All right. Roxanne, thank you. We will see you next, yes. next oh, so week. Nice to see all of you. Happy, you know, all-stars. So it was good. Happy premiere. You, yes. and, you and Parker are going to be fun to have together on uh, Thursday. I, I can't wait. We'll see you next Thursday. Yes. Okay, good night, everybody. Bye, girl. Bye. 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 Let's see. Okay. Um, who are we talking about? Oh, Bailey. Bailey. Why are you shaking your head, Keith? Again, like, how, they, they, Devon and Bailey are the ones they picked to represent the African-American community. I, I don't okay. know. Like, oh, hold on. Who would have been better? better? Shit. Shit. They don't have to cast a black woman. They could just put another black guy in there and get another white girl. It doesn't matter. Like, like. Lawan would be good. Well, hold sure. on, hold on, hold on. But if we're talking what? about black women, we're, we're talking say, about black women. Who would I you would say, Kalia or Jody? Kalia, like, come on. Yeah, why not? Like Kalia that Wong threw her be... dog up against the wall. Oh. Kalia. No, I mean, hey, if they can give Jeff Schroeder a fucking platform after being oh, okay. that's a, uh, what about what about uh, Amber? She was in season sixteen. Oh yeah, black woman. Was come on. Amber supposed to be on this season. It was big. I bet she was an alternate. I bet Amber was an alternate. Had to have been. Had yeah. to have been. You know, it, she, Amber got there's there's quite a number of of uh, black people who have gotten screwed on Big Brother. Um, Zakia hooking up with Paulie was her own fault, mm -hmm. but. Really, it was her own fault. Amber was stalked by fucking Caleb and was yeah. voted out because, because she wouldn't hook up. He was, right. yeah. he was obsessed with her, and his yeah. alliance said, We got to get rid of her. It's very unfair. Um, so, yeah. Can I, can I ask a, a stupid white guy, quite, like legitimate questions? Um, keep, <laughs> you said, like, as, as a representative of the black community, like, okay, when I look at um, Ian. Ian and I are the same archetype on the show. I don't think of Ian as a, a representative of the white community. Maybe How this is my like ignorance. But, but the reason no, why. So th th this is what I'm asking, like <laughs> from a truly genuine place. So when there are minority characters on these shows, why do they get the added burden or baggage or responsibility? Or how like whatever of representing yeah. their entire race of representing yeah, exactly yeah because, there's, because listen yeah, because yeah. there are sixteen people in the house and it's only one person of color so that's yes. the community yeah. that 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 person has to represent the, that community that's why I say it like that of course you and right. Ian are are the same type of character but then you also got thirteen other people that they share the same you know skin skin tone as you so that's what I'm saying they I put, get you. If, if they if they did seven and seven, or they did like fourteen or or, or eight black people, then I, it would be I would say okay. But it's always one or two African Americans. It's been the same ones the last few years. Like they don't yeah, and like and you're you're a cisgendered white man, 
who is constantly represented season after season. <clears throat> so like, I think that's your answer right there. You don't have to wake up every morning, think about being black, but I do. And, and, then, I, and, and then again, and, and then again, Davon, like you, I keep hearing the same thing. She's a big character. She's loud. She's this. Like, so is that the stereotype? Is that like what the African-American person has to, to, to be to represent the community? Bailey did, so Bailey that, acted a fool in her that, seat. That's what, that's, what the, that's what the white execs at the top think that we are. Yeah. That's, that's how they cast us. because That's, they how, they, that's how they already. cast. That is how yeah. they cast. There was, a, yeah. there was a scene, there was a day, there was a moment on Big Brother 8 where I said, I was making a joke and about people not eating their food. And I said, they're starving children in Africa. Eat your food, they're starving children in Africa. And Jamaica like jumps my shit. Why Africa? And I'm like, because like every commercial is like, you know, sponsor right. whoever yeah. in Kenya or wherever yeah. there's like a famine going. I'm like, that's why. And she was like really upset with me. And I'm like, don't make this about race. This is not about race. I picked it, Africa because the commercials on TV all the time. And, and, and part but hold on. But what happened was we, we I said, let's, let's go talk. And when we went into the room and we talked, and it was like they showed it on the show, and people bring this up and bring that clip up, um, have over the years a number of times. But she, she let me know, she's like, I've never lived with white people before. And I'm the only African American, and I carry this burden of representing my entire race. Like she laid it out for me, and I was like, I never that's thought of it that way because yeah. I don't have that. So, and that's why, like season after season, like Robin Cast and Allison Grodner and all the people at the top have failed black people by not giving black people a chance, like not giving America to experience black culture. By always making one representative yes. that person, and like it's it's pretty disgusting. And like Parker, they, Parker had a yeah. good point. He said Kalia. Now think about it. Kalia might not have had a great game, but she didn't act the asshole. She didn't act like a mad black woman. Right. She didn't do, do half the things that Davon and uh and Bailey did, and both of them got cast. So that's what I'm saying. Sure. What is? Voted her own alliance member out over Jeff, who's in the other alliance. Because okay. <laughs> he convinced her he was coming back with superpowers, Leon. And, and, and he did come back as Brendan. We know that. So it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, d like? D do you think it's um, fair? Is not the right word, but do you think it's appropriate, or do you think it's like uh, ingrained that the people uh, that minority representatives on the show are? like are the representative of their like is that a fair thing no. is that a fair thing to do to people them? no it's not fair no no it's, no it's i mean like racist it's racist for as fuck <laughs> sorry that's not what i mean i i i mean like like not that the not from like a, a casting yes obviously it's it's wrong to, to cast the the like I only want one black guy and one Asian girl and one, you know, whatever. Like that, that that's obviously stupid. We, we agree with that. I mean, is it fair for the individual? Um, like, for example, did, did either of you, uh, like in, as Dick's story, as he just outlined, which obviously I didn't know, but did, did, you, did you guys feel an additional um, pressure in the game as the quote representative of your community I, I, absolutely that's a great I, question because like I, when i when i was on like the very first few days like you know i was like nothing but cool with everybody because i knew i was the only black guy in the room and i've seen these shows i was a big fan of reality tv show but yeah. I, I, didn't, I never watched big brother but i knew just growing up you know that there's a certain way you act around company yeah. <laughs> company or whatever sure. you know what i'm talking about keith so like you know so like i when oh, wait, jacob this, did, when this, jacob this, did this whole hold this, on, listen okay all right listen go ahead. Go when, ahead, go when jacob started talking all this whole like parker is a snake bullshit that instantly puts the spotlight on the black guy the only motherfucker in the damn house so now i'm instantly pissed because now everybody's <laughs> looking at me when i didn't do nothing but be nice to y'all now y'all looking at me right. like i'm crazy so it's that kind of stuff right there. So now that's ingrained in your mind. 
so now you you can't forget me because I stand out like a sore thumb. It's like but this, you didn't this, have this, to call added, a house meeting in the middle of the night. Well, I was pissed. I was pissed off. I know I you. Were. I get that. I get that. I would. I, and my my experience is a little different than than Parker's. Like like especially from where I come from and my background. I when I saw Porsche, I'm like, damn, blonde hair, blue eyes. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I knew black, it. Man. Black, I, black I was women hate good. Keith. Yeah, black, black women, women probably do hate me. Black women probably do hate me, but I know. <laughs> I know I stand for it. Oh, girl. <laughs> That's why you had to go, man. You good? Yeah. <laughs> right, listen, so we can't I was, have him on here dating our white women. No, no, that was Portia was like going to be my like ride or die that season. I'm I knew, kidding. I knew that Danielle was coming after me, and I knew, like, I knew Danielle was coming after me, um, and I knew that Danielle would have to go at a certain point. So I wanted like uh, that person. So it was. I knew it would come. To, actually, it would come to a point that either me or Danielle went. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had to solidify that relationship. Anyhow, um, can, I just ask, sorry, can I just ask one more question? In the, so, Parker. Oh, Jesus. What, what, what <laughs> I genuinely want to know. I mean, this is, <laughs> no, go ahead. I mean, go ahead. I'm fucking with you. Going on culturally. Yeah, please. Big Brother is supposed to reflect this. I think this is an interesting conversation. Um, wh what's the solution? Because I would think that maybe an easy answer would be equal representation. However, there's a lot of equals to make there. There's white latinas blacks asians east like you you know are you it I, I wouldn't think that a solution is well you have to have one male of this category and one female of this category and that, that's how you're going to make your you, you know your quote diverse cast by pigeonholing it that you only say that maybe that maybe that's a racist answer but i i don't know what the solution is in these types of games and shows where you're supposed to be pulling from all walks of life and and all different ethnic backgrounds and, and diversity of thought and, and philosophy and religion and, and, and all these sorts of things. You, you know, like, how do we get to the place where, you know, if you're the only black guy in the cast, you're the black guy? You, you, you know what I mean? I, I know exactly what you mean, but like, to, to touch on your whole, like, you know, like, um, to make everything equal, I don't think casting one rep one race representative or whatever for marginalized groups is the answer because look how long it's been since they've had a korean uh, american male on the show sure exactly. you know what i mean so like you know but yeah but representation wait, who is the less korean american male asian j well wait no no wait, wait, is, he, is, korean, is, he, is he japanese or korean who? i'm not sure i don't know yeah, i'm, I'm not, but like, look, but the, the fact that we have- Yeah, to Asians like, are very underrepresented yeah, they're, on Big Brother, for sure. And, and, even, and even Hispanic people are underrepresented on the show. So like, uh, I had enough of it with Josh one, that's enough. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, right, they, they I'm kidding, I'm kidding. kidding. We, we still like, had a winner. <laughs> I, I, just think, I just think like, um, and when you, when you say like, you know, it's supposed to be like for all, like America really has a funny definition of all, you sure. know what I mean? So like, I just feel like it just needs that people just need to like actually start casting for actual game players and actual people who are interesting, you know, and like stop with the I gimmicks, agree. stop with the, um, you know, stop. that's the one, number one thing you have to stop with is the racial stereotypes. Because that's like keep that's keeping that's the, all the racism she, going, dude. That's all she keeping casts is stereotypes. Every single person is a stereotype. Rockstar was a stereotype. I'm a stereotype. You were a stereotype. Keith was a stereotype. But it perpetuates <laughs> the racism. Everybody, Peter. So when you when you Peter, so when you have like when you have like an only black us. person, when you only have one black person in a setting with white people who are like-minded uh, and I'm like, not, I'm, I'm think with about like, like-minded things, like, of course, this black person who might not have like certain things in common with this group of white people sure. might not fit in. So like, stop putting black people in situations where they have to play two games. I hear you. So Peter, I, I think I have something I can kind of contribute to that. I think a big part of it is society and how we've been exposed to right because you mentioned ian right so if ian was in a house with a bunch of of black people for example you wouldn't be thinking okay he's a representative 
Oh, I can't hear you. No, nope. we lost his audio. Now. Hey, Vincent. Oh, stop talking. Vincent. We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, there oh, we go. Sorry, where, where did you... Uh... you said uh, it, Ian as a representative. A representative, and then it, it muted. You're muted right. again. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was putting on permanent unmute for a sec. Um, so you wouldn't be worried that he's going to be perceived as what white people are, right? Because people in general have been exposed to white people. But there are a lot of people that are watching the show that haven't been exposed to certain minority groups. So that per when answer. they see that person, they're going to think that's yeah. how these people are, right? Yep. So for you, it's a lot easier uh, to, ha to have somebody in that situation. But for other people, it's more difficult because they know that there are people that are going to perceive their entire culture or whatever as being yep. however they act. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a perfect answer. That's yeah, that's great. Isn't, isn't Queso like the only Iraqi that's ever been on the show, like ever? As long as well, probably. He's like one of the well, only Middle, Middle Eastern peop well, people. Well, Middle Eastern though, we have Fessy and uh, Russell. Oh yeah. But yeah. were they Muslim? Oh, yeah, Russell Kairou. Yeah, Fessy's uh, uh, Muslim. Fessy's a Muslim. Yep. Did yeah, Fessy do his prayers way. like five times a day? No, not in the. Not I don't. The, no, I don't think he. I don't think he does five times a day. Uh, what was unique about Queso? Was Kesa wasn't that long after 9 11. And they put. Yeah, very close after. Yeah, yeah. And it was like them putting him in the house. I, see, I thought that was not like a risk, but but a bold. There was a bold casting at that time to put an Iraqi in the house. Yeah. That, that's a Muslim that was going in the backyard and, you know, uh, pointing his little rug, whatever you call it, sorry, uh, towards Mecca and like praying five times a day. Um, at certain times of the day. I thought that was a, a very bold casting on CBS part and Robin's part. That was a long fucking time ago. That was, yeah. a, that was 15 years ago. And they just really, the, the casting process has changed so much over the years. And it took it's an gear towards more young white Gen Z. -er. <laughs> it took a huge yeah. hit after 15. They got so afraid yeah. that they casted all these stupid goofballs on, on uh, 16. Um, and that's why it was so easy for um, Derek to manipulate all of them. And then in an altar case, so they casted that black girl that spoke in tongue. What was her name? Jo uh, Jocasta. Uh, Jocasta. <laughs> yeah. Jocasta. She was so sweet. I met her once. She was the sweetest person. I love Jocasta. She was, she's really I met nice. her in person, too. <laughs> she's she's nice, but she's another example of, like, the black churchgoer. Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. Jamaica, but Jamaica on my season was another yes, black church they, girl. They, they played that music. They played that organ music. Yeah, she yeah, got yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah she then, even got like the organ church pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that that translates to Carol in the Midwest thinking all black people just praise Jesus right. and speak in tongues. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, I think it's, it's, it's exhausting. I think Vincent hit it on the head where you have to become so overexposed to something that it becomes. The normal, you know, like, uh, second normal, or se not normal, but like it becomes neutral, or you know, like so that the, the, there's no. Um, it becomes normal like, that you don't see it any different than anything else. It's normal, right? That's about yeah. yeah I, I, but yeah, some right. I, I, Even yeah, when Tamar I, was celebrated with her win, pe black people celebrate that as the first black winner of right. Big Brother USA because yeah, we've never that. had a black winner. Got yeah, that. but like, but they, but they do, you know. No, so, I, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, because the, not, because black people winning this game or actually having any kind of success in this game isn't normalized. Right. Yeah. You ha it has. You have to. It becomes. You have to be so broadly exposed to all facets, and that's what Big Brother should be. Like, shouldn't that be the appeal you of the think. show? Hmm. Yeah. You well, would think Survivor used to the appeal used to be the places that they went. And that's gone too. Um, right, right, yeah. That's what they play yeah, time. yeah. Uh, Fiji. Let's get back to my list yeah. here. We got six more people to go through. Uh, I am, you know, the two people on social media that I have always said deserved another shot were very underrated. And like, there was actually three Christmas. So, right now. <laughs> Drunk? Uh, do you remember Daniel Reyes's? Secret partner Jason. Jason's yeah. uh, he's a talking head news guy out here in Orlando. Um, so we go out to dinner every once in a while. Super nice guy. Jason is so under. Everybody gives Danielle all the credit. And listen, I love Danielle. We're good friends. But you know what? Jason worked just as hard 
um, at that alliance and making all of that happen as Danielle did. And Jason is the one that fucking sent Marcellus packing when he didn't use the veto. <laughs> the veto, yeah. Yeah. So Jason's very underrated. Enzo is very underrated. And Keisha, I believe, is very yeah, underrated. Yeah. And yeah, I'm so glad Keisha's back. Um, I, You know what makes it really... I sat next to Keisha like four years ago at a uh, charity out here. And we were sitting next to you. We bullshitted the whole time, like hours, like four or five hours. I absolutely adore Keisha. She has a real chip on her shoulder and still is not, she has a dislike for Dan still. And I think <laughs> it's going to take a little bit for her to get over the up with Memphis in order to mend that fence. But that's a connection with them. And I'm sure, I bet my guess is that they do and they end up working together. I think it'd be stupid if they didn't. Yeah. Anybody? No, she's a huge Any, local. Anybody who was sure. on a season together should be working together. Yeah. I think so, yeah. too. Uh, we talked about yeah. um, the non-ear-ear, -ear Nicole. Uh, we talked about Kaser. Uh, we talked about Cody. Uh, Memphis we haven't talked too much about. Um, what are you guys expecting from Memphis? Anything? Same old uh, Memphis. He, Just he, he didn't win a Camaro on the first night, so... <laughs> Uh, listen, it's 12 years later, Memphis. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, he's I very good memory. Of, right? I'll, I'll I honest. remember him just I, being, like, very chill and, like, just kind of... Memphis you know, is very a chill. A nice guy, you know? Memphis... I, so I, I, I took Memphis to a porn convention in L.A. <laughs> okay. It was, like, the funniest thing ever, man. It was hilarious. Memphis is a very nice guy. I really like Memphis. And I saw him just last summer. Um, he was out here, so we got together. Um, super nice guy. I like him. I hope he does well. I have a feeling that he's going to end up like fodder. Um, and if he ends up getting in a in opposing thing with Cody's side of the house, those people, I think he's going to be. I think he'd be might be out early. So. Yeah, he, oh, I, I see him as a pre-jury if that's the case. You wasn't he so? on the wrong side of the equation? Or like, wasn't it? Or it was yeah, like he was Dan, Brian, Brian, and, yep. and yeah. like that unit of the house was like, they went in pretty quick succession. And then like the Renegades as an alliance weren't even really an alliance until like the late, the later, later stages yeah. of that game. Um, so I don't know. He, I don't yeah, know. Dan and really Memphis didn't get together until later because Dan was with those, those other dudes that all got picked up. Um, what was the yeah. um, the Asian girl's name? Uh, absolutely, Angie. Angie. Uh, Angie. And I love yeah. Angie. Um, mm -hmm. She used to live out here. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll have Angie on this season. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, he was with those people. He was with Brian and Angie, and uh, there was like three of them. Uh, I don't remember who the Dan. third. Uh, I thought there was one. Dan was the other one. Uh, no, because, Steven? yeah, because Dan's like, uh, after Brian goes, I think, goes, I think he goes to everyone and he's like, hey, like, I'm the only one who voted for my friend to stay. Like, I, I'm loyal. That's why you should keep me around. And that's his, like, pitch to get through the, the entire middle of the game when yeah. everybody else is just going crazy around him. Yeah, and then he ended up getting together with Memphis and um, they did and some they damage. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh... <laughs> All right, guys. I think it's time for me to uh, bow okay, out. All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up like, kind of soon, but Portia, thank you very much, and we will see you and Keith. You guys are on Thursdays, right? Wednesday. I, I can't. I, I don't know. I keep forgetting. I don't know why. Uh, Old people. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. You're popular. You got a lot of friends. <laughs> Have a good night, Portia. Bye, Portia. guys. Good night. Uh, Portia's got uh, – she's married now, right? Yeah. She's married and has a couple stepkids that live with her, and she's doing, like – homeschooling she lives in here in florida so uh i think anybody sending their kids back to school in florida are out of their mind with like ten thousand brand new cases of covid every day um yeah that whole i'm not a boy anymore out of ian was like pretty hilarious uh christmas really thinks she played a great game i thought that was kind of weird um <laughs> i don't know It'll be interesting to see how she does, though, because, you know, again, yeah, we, she kind of did have a handicap. So, you know, that kind of, like, put her in a position to be more uh, submissive. I agree. So it'll, be, it'll, be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she, like, 
you know, get them to the fold for sure. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, l- hopefully she but doesn't. She still get- doesn't have any business being there. Uh, she doesn't have any business being there. And hopefully she doesn't get into her car and crash into someone like she did her ex-boyfriend's girlfriend. Uh, and end up like throw a dildo at some, somebody. Yeah, and they still let her back in the house. <laughs> let, let, okay. me, let, hey, me like let me let me add Let me set up something, something like that. Hold on, hold on. You're right. <laughs> let me, I want to set the, I want to set the record straight. Right. When I posted those TMZ stories, I changed the headline and added the part where she hit him in the head with the dildo. That wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't really part of the story. I just added that. I added it for credit. I'm I thought it was for real. Like, damn, like, like, how are you wilding? Like, like, when you go onto a website and you click to tweet the story, it's all right there. And I just changed the headline and added you beat him with the head with the dildo. Um, so I'm, I'm mess, messing up to that. I had a, I had a really fun time watching all the replies, though. A dildo? She hit him with a dildo? Um, Man. Uh, you know what, what? You know what could possibly start the season off with, like, like in kind of like madness, is if Cody did go after Danielle and Danielle wins the veto, because um, she won't, she won't forget, and there'll be like a split house in no time, and Danielle will be like after him. Um, so uh, I don't know. Well, uh, hopefully not. Uh, I'd like it would be nice to see Danielle like fly under the radar for a little bit. Don't you think, Vincent? Yeah. <laughs> it, can she do it? Yeah, yeah, that's the question. No, Danielle has blown up every alliance she's ever been in, and it, didn't she say that in the in the? Yeah, show, right? she does. Yeah, yeah. She did. She blew up the late night. Annoying, man. The, the late night crew. She blew up. Yeah, she and, said I turned on my alliance. That's what she, she said. Yeah, she blew up the uh, the vets like way too early, and so <clears throat> I have a feeling that okay, I have a feeling that Danielle is going to align with Kaser and Janelle. And I heard that she's close with, with Nicole. Nicole. Hey, Mr. Fury. Uh, awesome. I love this alliance already. Get them to the end. Uh, the problem is, is um, ear, ear, Nicole has flipped on every single girl and betrayed every woman that she's ever played with. Yeah, so that's an issue. Yeah. Um, that's an issue for me rooting for my daughter. So um, anyhow, we'll have to see how things go. Who do you think? Who do you guys think? Uh, we'll we'll start wrapping this up now. Who do you guys think that Cody's going to put up? Man, probably. Definitely, I think you're definitely right, an, you're definitely old, old school people. female. You know, two gonna, females. Gonna, you think he yeah, bro- really will put up two females? I, I think he'll put up two women. Either either two women or he'll put up um, a woman <laughs> and uh, Kevin. A woman yeah. in Kevin. Yeah, because yeah. He, if you remember what he said, he said, I'm not worrying about if, if I put two people up and, they, and when one of them come back, I'm not worried about a win at HOH. So it's, it's not going to be right. somebody that he, he's not going to be somebody I don't think he that, he's going to be. I, I don't yeah. think it will be Kevin. Be, after last season, I don't think you're going to see a black guy go first. I'm thinking. Or even I'm, be put on the block first. I'm thinking maybe Keisha and. I don't think he'll put up Keisha. No. It's, it's, it's somebody who is somebody who he, he know he wouldn't lose to. That's what he said. Right. Yeah. It's a good point. That's tricky. I don't know. It's a good. It uh, it it's, a, it's a compelling first week. Could you imagine the fan base if he put up like Bailey and Devon? Uh, he, he, yeah. he's, not touching, he's not touching Devon though. Like, right. I don't I do, like, it would be like people would be picketing CBS. Like it was, burn that motherfucker to the ground. <laughs> yeah, all the way to the ground. <laughs> yeah, but, well, David, you next. Burn it down. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do yeah. think, unfortunately, that there may be a real chance that David ends up. It's just so. It's the Francesca thing from Survivor. It's so he's the he is the odd man out. Francesca, yeah. if you okay, if you guys don't know. Francesca was ver- voted out first in her first season of Survivor, and for some stupid reason, and her and Philip, the specialist, didn't get along on the first season. <laughs> so the casting and producers thought it would be a great story to put two black people that don't like each other on the same season of Survivor again, and Francesca went home first again. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. crazy. It, I mean, that's that's probably never ever gonna happen again. Except it might happen with David. Just You're because right. 
you're right. Just because um, he's the odd man out, like you said. <laughs> you know, if you're looking around, it's like, oh, all, you know, you, you can did you, delude Peter, yourself in the game. Did you catch – did you kind of catch – there was a moment when everybody was hugging. Hugging each other. He, yeah, he was like, just – And he was just looking like – Yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Was. Okay, I yes, was yes. Awesome. Yep. He kind of had this moment where he looked like – he was like, like, yeah. his like who do I hug? Who knows me? Yeah. <laughs> he looked, he looked like a guppy in a pelt in an ocean full of sharks. And I, yeah. and I, yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's not him. It's just that he, he played a year ago. His and head he, is still in zombie mode from that. He, he's young too. He doesn't have the relationships he's too. A young yep. guy. And he, and he yeah. only is probably going to have relationships with people from the last like two odd years of big brother. If that and it's probably largely contained to his, own season i wouldn't be surprised if he even didn't know some like literally didn't even have watched some of the old school players yep. so i yeah. think socially and if they're all like hey i finished third i finished second i i won 15 comps and like this guy didn't even do it like you can delude yourself to make him the easy I was, week i was targeted by, by a racist <laughs> right yeah you know like that's that's something that can i can very easily happen in big uh, and Big Brother, so I would not be surprised if David is vulnerable this week because I, you know I don't think it's going to happen. I think the producer. I don't, I don't yeah. think it will either. I think the producers will say something to him in the diary room. You remember what happened last season? Don't even, don't even think yeah. about it. Right? We, yeah. We're going to bring, gonna bring him back. <laughs> Can you please <laughs> evict a white guy first? first. I know. If, right, if you pick right, David, he's going to. We're going to save him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I remind all health guests that Black Lives Matter. Who do you hope <laughs> goes home first? Oh, I love them all kind of now. <laughs> Me, Chris, okay. If I'm not going to get my way and Tyler's not going home strategically, I'm hoping for Christmas or ear, ear, that she can go too. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for uh, probably the same. I would say either Christmas or Tyler. Oh, Tyler, Tyler like, is such a great character. I wouldn't want to see him get like. I want. I like seeing good players persevere and overcome, and like that. You was understand. So you understand the danger of Cody and Tyler yeah, yeah, connecting. He, yeah, he, they need to go. That's the I'm, most. I'm with you. That's the most dangerous potential twosome in this entire game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but as a viewer, <laughs> it's, it's compelling. It, like, why rather say, stars, listen, if if. One of them has to go. Even if it's Cody, then watch Tyler scramble a little. He doesn't need a fucking frat boy hanging out and these two, like, you know, uh, doing yeah, a Brett yeah, We don't and, want to see that. A Brett and Winston yeah, we, repeat. Um, we, just, we just don't need to see the whole cis white man bullshit. I'm yeah, right. I'm just over it. I mean, yeah, like, let's, let's, let's get some fucking colorful shit going. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, Sorry. listen. Um, uh, we'll see what Sorry. happens. Well, listen. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, well, just, well, hey, I, let me just name my favorites. I like Ian. I like Danny. I like Portia, and I like Tyler. Portia's no, not on this season. I mean, I mean, Portia's did, not you, on. did I say Portia? Did I say Portia? Damn! Like, well, where's my She's head in love. at? She's damn! Some water. God damn! Uh, it's so far. Yeah, <laughs> this guy has a doctorate, but he thinks with his penis. Like, I, I'm like, dude. Listen, listen. Think it with the wrong head. I, you, he's like, Dick, you got to give Christmas a chance. I'm like, I do, right, so you can fuck her? I don't, I don't. I, I'm not it's giving it to uh, She's out. <laughs> Christmas. I did. I, I, so Christmas, Danny, Ian, Janelle, and Tyler. Those are, that, those are the five that I would like. I'll be okay with any of the one of those five wins. But, I mean, at the same time. Uh, you put Christmas Tyler in there, didn't you? You yeah, put, did, Christmas, put in Christmas in there. Yeah. I, I, I love yeah. you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you who my faves. Well, who I'm rooting to succeed. Obviously, all of the people with melanin, and all the white people down from BB13 and down. Anyone pass? <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Oh, Ian, I don't. I fucked fuck with the end. Yeah, wow. I fucked with the end. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no, no. I do. I fucked with the end. Like yeah. so, yeah. I, I like Ian. Ian's a yeah. very, very nice yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very nice guy. He's smart. He can play the game. They oh, I'm sorry. Him. He's a very nice man. Man. He's a very nice man. He's a man. <laughs> yeah, but all the, man. Um, all the white people past, um, past 14, you can forget it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. Vincent, who are you pulling for <laughs> besides your sister? 
<laughs> besides her, I guess second place would be either Janelle or Ian. But yeah, my, uh, as far as your question about who do I want to see leave first, I have to go with Keisha because anyone who says that my dogs are literally my children, I, there's a real <laughs> cringe <laughs> uh, listen, uh, You saw it on season eight. I got into the argument with uh, Amber when she said that she would die for her animal or dog or something. And I was but, like, what? Bailey, Bailey said but the I same love thing. Keisha. Bailey said well, the exact same thing. Well, then you should love Kalia then for her, um, you know. We're throwing a dog daughter, up against the wall. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter, did you tell us who you want to go first, who you want first out? I definitely wouldn't uh, hate seeing Christmas go first. That's for sure. I mean, uh, any of the newer, like, even though I kind of know the newer school players on a more personal level, my fandom is totally in the, like, old, like you know, from 14 back. Um, so as long as that crew is safe for the longest possible, then I'm going to be happy. Yeah, I'm good. I, I love, I love that this cast is so much like mature and older. Yeah, it, this it, is, this will be the for, oldest average cast ever. This they, they, get a, they get an A for diversity. It's a lot of diversity going on in there too. So I, 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 I thought it was, on, honestly, yeah. I thought it was going to be more diverse. Um, five, I, out of, I, five out of sixteen. I mean, <laughs> mm, it could be better. Yeah, it's a, almost almost a third of the cast. I was yeah. very surprised at um, how many blondes. You know, when all these rumors were starting, when, when all the rumors were starting, I and I would like talk to different people. I'm like, that's too many blondes. Because remember, Haley, Haley was rumored um, heavily oh, yeah. to be on this season. And then there was like a couple other people, and I'm like, it's, oh, and I'm talking to Janelle, and I'm like, it's too many blondes. And she's like, we had four on 14. I'm like, you did? And yeah. she like rattled them off. I was like, damn. And, there was uh, no like big surprise. I like, I really want, like when she said 16, I was like, ah. like I really wanted there to be like a surprise, you know, like not that the, the cast was officially leaked or anything, but obviously there is a, like, you know, people predicted what ended up being the cast. There didn't end oh, up there. Excuse me, Peter. Uh, let me correct you right there. Do you see this picture right here? This is the picture that I posted online on July 27th. Everybody else got that shit from me, motherfucker. <laughs> well, there you go. So no, you, you correctly shit. predicted the cast. But there was a lot of, you know, as we've said, there was a lot of memes that were either alternates or maybe they got pulled because of COVID. Um, and you know, last minute potential, like, oh, a surprise might show up. Like, people always like to be surprised, and there wasn't any like the surprise in the episode was the <laughs> twist, and nobody likes the twist. When yeah. I, you know, the, I, I think the, the casting, I mean, it's, it's great. The diversity definitely, I feel like, could have room for improvement. Five out of like people of color, you know, five out of uh, 16 people of color, it just still shows you that this the production has a lot of work to do when it comes to diversity, you know, diversity when it comes to, like, non No, people. the thing that, like, screams it is, like, they had to get a first out for a black guy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like... And it's they just, only had just, a straight black guys. We talked about this earlier. They only had how many to pick from? Seven? But 11, 11 white start. people out of 16. Think about that, how that reflects on the white supremacy issue of this country. Think about that. 11 white people out of freaking 16. Well, I think that... Think about it. Uh, uh, no, listen, I, I, I totally get it. I understand where you're coming from. I think that the divide is going to be um, uh, age or old school, new school, and it's basically the same anyhow. So. Um, but yeah. we'll find out. The feeds are going on right now. Um, I'm sure that there's a bunch of shit. Everybody grab ass in, and, but there's <laughs> got to be a lot of game playing going on right now, too. So um, we're, I'm going to call it a right show. Away. But like, yeah, I think it was Danielle who was like, or either, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Danielle who was like, I'm surprised that Dan and Derek aren't here. So like, there's obviously names that a lot of people were expecting, preparing for, um, you know, doing some advanced scouting, and now you get in there and it's a... This was like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they look at this is all star. Yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. Like, that Am was, I in the right house? The, <laughs> the all stars <laughs> of the first season became kind of, you know, like they were really good and then they became exceptional <laughs> through that All-Stars process. And because it's taken so long to get a second All-Stars, they become more like, uh, more, they just, their they iconography did. keeps but building. They, they fucked up. There. 
They should have done another All Stars at fifteen. They really 14. should have. They should have. They should have done it at fourteen. They shouldn't have done the split season on thirteen. Your group picked the, the, the Yeah, the, you're right. Thirteen, fourteen. Should waited, they and should, they yeah. should have done it at fourteen with you could have had all the group from all the group from fourteen plus the group from thirteen, Jesse, and then you only have to find four other people from like eight to uh fourteen oh, yeah. to fill in. You like he should probably would have been one of them, like meet Kevin again like that's easy to slot those people in and now like we should have been at our third all-stars really but we're not uh, yeah. but we're still happy that we got it uh, all right all right one last thing uh this is where Danielle uh, said it <laughs> so it's um I'm hoping uh, uh we all know her temperament I'm in her corner um we'll see what happens um that's all I got. Anybody else got any final words before we go? Excited. It's going to be a messy season. Yeah, yeah. I really hope this is good. You know, what? my biggest fear for this season is a repeat of Survivor winter season where they picked off every yeah, single yeah. old school player one right. after the next one after the next. One, like, yeah. they, take the, they took them all out. They were all gone. Um, so I just really hope that doesn't happen. Um, anyhow, that's all I got. You guys have a good night. You guys, thanks for subscribing. You guys, thanks for subscribing. The next show is uh, Sunday, 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 Sunday um, which is uh, uh, hey, Peter and, and, Pete, Kat and Peter. And then me and Vincent will be back on Monday. And then we get on with Wednesday and our first. We're going to have a. We're having an eviction. Thursday is a big. Thursday is a lot of Thursday. Okay. All right, cool. All right, you guys, have a good night. And all right, I'll good see, night, everybody. see everybody on their day. Later, everybody. Uh, all right.